Hello everyone and welcome to the Shadow Moon Burial Ground uh, Challenge Mode Gold Guide. I'm the Death Knight in this group, uh, Baby Jace. This is a pretty simple, straightforward um, challenge mode, so you should be able to get it pretty easily. The first pull, um, you want to focus all your attention on the Bone Mender. It'll cast only two things, uh, Shadow Bolt and Bone Mend, or Dark Mending, something like that. You want to interrupt the Dark Mending as this will heal the two Ritual Bones. Be aware that the, the Ritual Bone mobs are mobs that do cleave damage, so you don't want any melee or anyone in front of them with the tank, because it'll cleave onto them, and they do do a pretty decent amount of damage. Once you've killed those, you're going to come across the um, Void Lord, or the Void Spawn. Whatever side it's going to, you want to go to the opposite side. So see how it's going to the right? That means we're going to go to the left. And we're going to pull all these mobs here. Now sometimes the Void Spawn here will be despawned, and sometimes it will be there. Unfortunately, if it's there, you kind of just have to deal with it and interrupt it, and uh, you'll lose a little bit of time. But it's still doable even if it is there. Um, if it's not there, you got lucky, and you don't have to deal with it, and you can just continue on pretty fast. There's uh, three spirits here and a caster. You're going to want to focus on the caster. It just casts Shadow Bolt, so just interrupt it, kill it. This pack isn't really too much of a problem. Uh, eventually, you'll get them lowish enough, and you can pull the, you can even pull the spiders with this pull. Um, while it's happening, like a range, just shoot a spider, and they'll come over. And they don't really do too much damage. But uh, once you've killed all those, make sure you dismiss all your pets if you have any, and jump down the hall. If you don't dismiss a pet, and you jump down, your pet will pull trash and you will wipe. So, you definitely want to dismiss your pet, jump down, resummon your pet, kill the little spiders here, or kite them to the next pack, it really doesn't matter. Um, but you're going to go to the next pack, which will have another Bone Mender and three Ritual Bones this time. Again, focus down the Bone Mender, we'll only cast Shadow Bolt and uh, Dark Mending. Interrupt Dark Mending so they don't heal, and it should be fine. Um, yep, or Shadow Men. It's Shadow Men, not Dark Men. I apologize. And uh, once once it's dead, you'll just focus on the the bones themselves, the reanimated uh, bones. And uh, once they die, you'll you'll make your way to the next boss. On challenge mode, there is no two, uh, there's no void spawns at the bottom of the stairs. They removed them for challenge modes. So you're just going to go straight to the boss. This boss is pretty much identical to the heroic counterpart. Everything just does more damage, so just be aware of uh, everything. Be aware of all the runes. They'll still one-shot you or get you pretty close to dying. Um, and the only real mechanic you kind of need to worry about is the adds she spawns and the daggers that come down. Uh, just like on heroic, you don't want to stand in the daggers because it is a lot of damage that you need to avoid as there is a bunch of unavoidable AoE on this fight. Once she does summon the add with her Dark Communion ability, you want to let it get like closer to melee before you stun it, so that the melee can just quickly swap to it um, without having to like go really far out. Just make sure it does not touch the boss, because if it does touch the boss, while it's not an automatic wipe, it is at least a minute wasted. It's a, long, it's a lot of time you waste, basically, so you might as well just reset at that point. Well, she'll cast her Dark Eclipse ability, run over one of the moon symbols on the ground that are white, and you will take uh, like 70 or 80% less damage, and it should be fine. Uh, we lusted on this boss, by the way. We felt that lust on this boss was uh, better than uh, anywhere else, but uh, just go ahead and kill her and then make your way to the next pack. This next pack actually hurts uh, quite a bit. Um, the main thing that hurts in this pack are the Soul Renders. Uh, you def if you're a DK, you want to AoE grip them all together just so you can get AoE stuns on them and get better AoE. But uh, you definitely want to interrupt their Rending Void Lash. I guess they're called Shadow Moon Enslavers. You want to interrupt their Rending Void Lash, as many of them as you can. These hurt quite a bit. Um, as you can see, my health is just, just tanking when they're casting Rending Void Lash on me. So you're going to want to focus, like, you know, maybe mark a skull on one of them, and you just want to focus that one down. Once you do kill it, though, you're going to head to the next pack. Uh, Exhumers will cast an uninterruptible ability that will exhume those graves. Um, you can actually stop this by stunning them or using, like, Typhoon, Thunderstorm, Death Grip. Abilities like that will stop it. Unfortunately, you can't completely avoid uh, an exhumed spirit because you have to walk through there. 
you can activate just the one on the right or the left and leave the other one open, so you only have to deal with one and not two. Um, once you've killed both Exhumers, um, you can pretty much just go straight to the boss. The Exhumed Spirits don't really do too much damage. They just they just kind of hit on you. They don't really do anything else. We opted to kill this one just so Bulu can uh, get some mana. Our healer could get mana. But if your healer has a lot of mana, then you can just go straight to this boss. You're going to want to run into the middle here to summon just that uh, spirit. You don't want to summon any other spirits. One is just fine. And you're going to focus all of your attention onto the boss with just, just cleaving on the spirit. This boss is exactly the same as Heroic. He will do a frontal cone uh, void blast, which you don't want it to be directed at anyone. You can AMS it or use a small personal cooldown to mitigate the damage off of that. Then once he does that, he will teleport somewhere and use Void Vortex. We found that it did very little to no damage, so the melee were just sitting inside of it, just DPSing him, not really bothering moving away. He'll cast a uh, Possessed uh, Soul, he'll rip your soul out. You need to DPS this as fast as you can. Um, once you, just like on Heroic, if you kill it, you need to click it to channel the cast to get out. And this will give you a DPS buff. Once you do get out, this is where you're going to want to pop all of your cooldowns, your DPS cooldowns, because now you're doing uh, much more damage for like 15-20 seconds. It's a considerable uh, damage increase, so you want to use all your DPS cooldowns here. Once he's done with that, he's going to go ahead and go to the Void Devastation, which will just put a bunch of um, Void Zones around. Try not to stand in these, these do a lot of damage, um, but it's it's pretty avoidable, it's very easy to avoid. As you see here, I, I barely moved, and I wasn't in the majority of them, except for the one at the very end. So it's a very easy mechanic, and he just repeats his abilities in that order. Uh, once he's dead though, you're going to want to go ahead and go to the next pull. We felt this pull also hurt quite a bit, and um, so I, I opted to army here, but uh, you could just use major tank cooldowns here, I don't think I really used any. Again, kill mark a raining void lasher or a shadow moon enslaver, and interrupt raining void lash. You don't want to get too many of these off. You want to you want to grip in the shadow moon ex uh, exhumer, and you just want to kill it with the, this pack, just so you could get mob count. Um, and it's a patrol anyway, so you don't you won't have to deal with it by itself. You just you want to AOE it with this. Just again, be warned. This pack does do a lot of damage. Um, I took quite a bit of damage on this pull, but once you once you get the feel for it, it's not too much. You just need to kick uh, Rending Void Lash. But, uh, once you've killed that pack, you can go ahead and make your way down this uh, hallway. If you have Glider, go ahead and Glider down the hallway. There's just going to be one big spider, a bunch of small spiders, and two bats. You want to pull all of them together with focusing all of your damage on the big spider. You want to interrupt as many of its casts as you can because the big spider does most of the damage. So you see I interrupted Death Venom, and then he's going to cast the uh, Necrotic Explosion, or Necrotic Burst next, which we want to interrupt. You just want to interrupt everything that the Corpse Spider does, it does a lot of damage. Also note, the bats do put up a stacking disease on, or poison, on your uh, tank. You're going to want to dispel this when it's at 4 or 5 stacks. And uh, just you know, be aware there's a lot of burst damage. If you have a warlock here, your warlock can set up a gateway so that the endpoint is on top of the edge, and you're gonna want to take this just to skip the, the next two spiders if you can. Don't glider off this edge. We were trying to see if you could glider past the worm and like have the worms not spawn. That's clearly not the case. So you're gonna want to pull, uh, just jump down, pull the worm with the four bats, and you're just gonna want to AOE all these with most of your focus being put on the carrion worm. Just, again, the bats do a lot of damage because of their stacking uh, debuff, so you just want to be aware of that and you just want to use cooldowns if you need to. You don't really need them on the next boss, so this is definitely where you're going to want to use your tank cooldowns, maybe your healer cooldowns on your tank for, for this pull especially. Once the worm does go down, you're just going to drag the bats to the next worm. You can go ahead and use Binding Shot or Freezing Trap, stuff like that to slow the bats from getting there, just to let your tank and your healer recover a little. But eventually they will make their way to the Carrying Worm. And again, you're going to AoE off the Carrying Worm onto the bats. They should be pretty low at this point, all of them should be under 50% health. So they're not too much of an issue, like they'll be gone pretty soon. 
Once you've killed the bats and the carrion worm, let your healer get mana, because this was a pretty decently in mana intensive pull, uh, the bridge. Just let your healer get some mana before you pull the uh, third boss. And once you do the third boss, he is exactly the same as Heroic as well. Um, he just does a lot more damage, so as a tank, you're just going to want to pull him, get him right, get right into meleeing, get to the right, corpse, kill Corpse Breath, use like AMS or something to get some runic power. Corpse Breath does affect the rest of your players too, so just be aware that everyone's going to take some damage from Corpse Breath. Make sure you don't stand in that cleave. If you stand in that smash, you're probably going to die. Um, every time someone has stood in it, they have died, so don't stand in that. The boss will throw out some little void zones that slow you. These are very important. You do not want to put these next to the boss because he'll cast Inhale. And the way to counter Inhale is you just want to sit into the little void zone thing and you want to just um, sit there and wait for the Inhale to finish. If you actually get sucked in by Inhale, you will die as our monk, tank, or our monk uh, DPS did there. He died because he got hit by the Inhale. Once the inhale is done, the two worms that you fought on the bridge will come up and all three of them will start slamming. So you need to find a spot like where I was there to uh, avoid all three slams because again, if you get hit by the slam, you're probably going to die. Um, to deal with the worms, you just need to have two of your DPS sitting in their melee range, but you're still going to put all of your damage onto Bone Maw itself. You're just going to ignore the worms, you don't need to... You don't need to damage them, you just need to be in their melee range so they stop spitting on the entire raid. Eventually, the boss will cast Inhale again, and at this point, you're going to find it difficult to be in their melee range and be in a Void spawn. So what you're going to want to do, if you're a healer, you're going to want to use some, you know, maybe a healer cooldown here, just so everyone doesn't die. Um, the boss should be somewhat lowish at this point, so you, uh, hopefully you kill it at that point. For this pack, you're going to in, in, use your invis pot just to get past the two spiders and the bats. Um, they do a lot of damage, you just want to skip them. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to pull them again because we are short one mob on mob count. Um, so if you can somehow make up that one mob later on in the instance, you should definitely do that. Or earlier in the instance, you should definitely do that. For this pull, we pull both void spawns together. Now these void spawns cannot get their cast off. If both of them cast at the same time, someone's probably going to die. The way we found to deal with this mechanic is we would focus on the left one, and we would let the left one's cast go off first while interrupting the right one. And then when they start both started casting their second round of cast, we would start interrupting both of them as, as often as we could, um, just so they wouldn't both interrupt or use their ca abilities on us. Now, if you don't have enough interrupts, you you can let them one go off each time. You can never let two go off though. It is going to kill you. So if you are short on mob count like we were, you're going to want to CC the two spiders and just pull the bats. Um, mark one of the bats and just nuke that bat down. Don't cleave, just single target burst it down. Once it's dead and you've got mob count, just abandon the other bat and run straight for the uh, doorway. Uh, you will drop combat when you go into the doorway and they won't bother you anymore. Once you do door in, go in the doorway, uh, Nerzul will be in right in front of you, and you should just pull right away, get pre-pots off, and Lust, use all of your cooldowns on this boss. Um, it's pretty much exact same as Heroic. Tank needs to position Malevolence away from everyone else, don't stand in it. He will activate the Void Circle on one of the range players, just don't uh, run away from it, and it'll, it'll do less damage the farther away from it you are. Try not to spawn these next to your tank though because it is a lot of damage for the tank to take. Uh, Ner'zhul does melee for quite a bit of damage, so his melee on top of the Void spawn is really bad. Once these bone, uh, Ritual of Bones are up, you can go ahead and just target one of them and nuke it down so that there's an opening like you see in front of you. You don't need to kill all of them, you just focus on one of them, your range, then possibly your melee you're going to have to help out. And then uh, for the tank, you can just sit in the gap and you just don't even have to move. Just sit there and they'll go right by you. And uh, he just repeats these abilities like that. He'll just keep casting Malevolence, Ritual of Bones, which is the Void Zone. And then, uh, or no, Ritual of Bones is the Wall. So he'll just keep casting Malevolence, the Void Zones, and Ritual of Bones. Generally, the Ritual of Bones will always come from the same spot. So 
the same side of the room, so just don't even worry about that. If for some reason they do spawn on the side that you are tanking, you just need to move really fast and go to the opposite side of the room. This is a pretty easy challenge mode to get, so if you're a little short, maybe there's some, uh, you can chain pull a little more, be a little more aggressive with your chain pulling. Um, but if that helps you get gold or uh, you enjoyed the guide, go ahead and subscribe. Leave a comment if you want to leave a comment. If there's something I forgot to mention or something you would like answered, just go ahead and leave a comment. Um, go ahead and click on any of the eight videos you see in front of you and that'll direct you to one of the other uh, challenge mode guides. And uh, other than that, have a good day.